mean you guys know that Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And we say good morning uh, to all of our Facebook friends. God bless you. We are out on the parking lot. Some are in their cars. Many are in chairs. And we've just come to have a good time in Jesus. Amen. This is Resurrection Sunday. I'm going to read scripture and prayer. And then praise and worship will come one more time. Amen. Coming from 1 Peter, 1 Peter, the first chapter, verse 3. And it reads from the King James Version, Blessed be the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again, that's because he saves, to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say good morning to you once again. And we thank you, Lord God, for being who you are. Thank you, Father, that great is your faithfulness. And we've come this morning to praise and to worship you. And Father, we thank you for all those who are watching. And we thank you for Pastor Bush, Lady Natasha, and all the members 
who are here on this morning. And Father God, we just ask you to continue to protect us and keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. For greater are you that's in us than he who is in the world. And we can do all things through you because you give us strength to do it. So Lord, bless this time, bless this day. Be with Pastor Bush as he brings a mighty word on this morning. Continue to bless praise and worship and all our musicians. And Lord, we've just come to shout and praise your name. So we ask you to have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Okay, good morning, church. Let's wake up, amen. Let's wake up because we have a reason to be here. Jesus is the reason for the season, amen. We just saw that Jesus saved. He's the reason our access to heaven, amen. So today we don't sing about being happy that we're here today. Some people didn't make it back. When we left here, some people are not here, amen. In the name of Jesus, so we have a reason to be happy, amen.
of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give them a great big amen. amen. The word of God said that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. As this Resurrection Sunday, and we conduct our responsive reading, I'd like you to stand for God's word, please. And please repeat after me. We'll be coming from John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. That's John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. God's word said as following. Please repeat. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection in the life. He that believeth in me, though he, they were dead, yet shall they live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. May God have a blessing. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise on this blessed resurrection Sunday. You can take your seat. Isn't it good to be on the grounds of the Lord's house? The right way church. 4300 Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas. We thank God for each of you being here. We want to say hello to all of the people of the Right Way Church. We want to welcome all of our guests. And we want you to know that we don't consider you a guest. We consider you part of this blessed body of Christ. I want to thank all of the associate ministers, Reverend Mamie Bush Johnson and Reverend Michael Sterrett. I see Reverend Theo Blaylock has made it. He rode up on his motorcycle. I like motorcycles. Amen. Brother Brian, Sister Teresa rode theirs. This is awesome. In the parking lot of the Right Way Church. And so we thank God for our praise and worship team. It's been a while. And they sounded mighty good. Amen. Amen. Certainly we thank God for the fellas that's been with me throughout this pandemic, throughout this virtual ministry experience. We thank God for our music staff. Come on, give them a hand. Big Mike is on the drums. Brother Justin, some of y'all Y'all wave at Brother Justin. Y'all haven't met him yet. Y'all are officially being introduced. Amen. He's on the bass guitar. And then we all know and love Reverend Timothy Howard, uh, Minister of Music. And he's on the keyboard. That Hammond organ is still in the church in spite of the remodel. Amen. It's still there. It's all good. Amen. And then we thank God again for my good thing. Lady Natasha Bush, she's been with me through it all, amen, through this virtual experience. She's been running the controls, but today she got the big boys with her, amen. Brother Reggie Dean, owner of Jark One Entertainment, his family is here. We thank God for Sister Audra and Sister Brindley, my sister and my niece, amen, because Brother Reggie is my brother, amen. And then we thank God for Brother Marvin being here, Brother Charles, and then the other gentleman that helped set up as well. To God be the glory. We thank God for our ushers that are helping us. Come on, let's give them a hand to Amen, Sister Robin and Sister Sterrett, leader of our usher ministry of the Right Way Church. Thank God for our deacons. Deacon Dale is here. Uh, Deacon Keith may be on the way. Thank God for Brother Glenn. He 
has certainly been holding it down. He beats everybody here. Amen. He gets here first, and so we thank God for him. Good to see all of the brethren that have helped us with all the drive-up prayer and giving. As you all know, we've been live uh, 1045 a.m. or thereabout each and every Sunday, live on Wednesdays. And we're still going to do that. Amen. We're going to pick Wednesdays back up. It's on the website. I'm not going to tell y'all everything because I want you to do a better job of checking out the website and our Facebook page. Amen. How many know that I did an invite video? You on church ground, don't you? Tell the truth. How many knew that I did an invite video for this Sunday? Amen. So right there, uh, let's do a better job of paying attention you can find everything out. Amen. All that phone call, uh, girl, boy, what, what's up, man? What they doing? It's on Facebook. Amen. The Right Way Church Facebook page. Amen. And, uh, or you can go to www. Listen to that. www.rightwaydallas.com. Amen. That's where you will find our church website. You can give online, amen. Some are going to do that here shortly, amen. Or now, if the Lord is leading you to do it now, www.rightwaydallas.com, and it will walk you through giving. We've got some hand sanitized station stands here. Please use that. We're going to encourage you and ask you to keep your mouth covers on. Amen. Keep safe social distance. God is working us through this. Getting us through this pandemic. Do I have any witnesses here today? Amen. How many can agree with Marvin Sapp in that song when he said, I never could have made it. Never would have made it if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Do I have some witnesses? Y'all mighty quiet. I thought y'all were ready to come back to church. I thought y'all couldn't wait to get back. Amen. Amen. So we we need to wake up. Amen. And give God glory on this blessed Sunday morning. I can't call everybody's name, but it's sure good to see you all here on today. And we're not going to prolong the time. We're praying for everyone that stands in need of prayer. Amen. Praying for everyone that stands in need of prayer. Amen, amen. Praying for Sister Onita Ray. She called me and she's going to have surgery in the middle of the month. So we're praying for her as well. Amen. It's just so good to be here. Amen. Thank God for Big John. I call, I've been calling him Big John since he was the size to hold almost in one hand. But that's my nephew, Brother John Johnson. He is part of the audiovisual ministry of the Right Way Church. Amen. Along with Lady Natasha. And then Brother Zach is going to join and help us out with that as well. Lady Natasha, he already committed to it. Amen. And Sister Lady Natasha leads up that ministry. So to God be the glory. Would you want Zach right now? Oh, okay. I saw you moving. You know, it's hard to know what you're saying and you got your mouth covered. Amen. But to God be the glory. We're not going to prolong the time today. We want to be brief. Amen. Uh, so at this time, we're going to go ahead and bless the Lord with our giving. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. I want everybody that can and will. Come on. We got the chairs spaced out. Come on and sit down. Amen. Some of the churches uh, have done it. In the, in the car, but I like this better, amen, uh, give you more of a church feel, so come on and, and occupy these seats right here, amen. If you desire an envelope, raise your hand, the ushers will come to you, raise your hand. We keep track of it and you'll get tax deduction if you care for it. Amen. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. Amen. Reverend Blaylock, I'm going to 
just uh, calling y'all. Reverend Blaylock, Brother Kenny, Deacon, all y'all, man. Come on, come on over and sit down. Occupy these chairs. We paid for them. Come on and sit down on them. Amen. See, y'all make me keep it real. Amen. A lot of us, we still paying for the car, so we're leaning on that and come on, sit in the chairs. <laughs> It's already paid for. Amen. Come on. Amen. We're going to have church today. Amen. We've already started. To God be the glory. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. Y'all saw those over there. Two bins. Let's get the other one as well. That way we take care of one side. Each side. Amen. I need an envelope as well. Amen. To God be the glory. Bless you. Amen. Anyone else? Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. We thank God for you today. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving throughout. Have we covered this side over here? Lift it up if you're ready to give. Come on, brethren. I want one taking one side. Steward takes this side. Deacon take that side. Amen. Thank you all so much. God bless you. I encourage you to get the vaccine. Amen. Me and Mother Bush, one of the founders of the Right Way Church, we go to get our second shot on Wednesday. Amen. And I'm excited about it. Amen. But you still want to take precaution. Amen. Keep your mouths covered. And, uh, Keep your hands sanitized. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. I got mine ready for you. Anyone else? We don't want to leave anybody out. Amen. Mother Conley, her hand is raised. Mother Con other, lift it up if you got it. Mine's lifted up. Amen. Coming. God bless you. We thank you. To God be the glory. I'm glad to have my good friend. And he started out as a customer, but he's my friend and brother. Brother Gary Linebar is here. Amen. Amen. We're going to baptize him at some point as well. Amen. And others I've been hearing that want to be baptized, Amen. let me know. Amen. You, you can call or text me you can email we're praying for sister denise williams she emailed asking for prayer so we're praying in fact i'm gonna have rep words rep blaylock not just yet but get ready rep blaylock we want you to come pray amen And he's not going to hold us long. Amen. He get right to it. Y'all don't know. Amen. God bless you, Sister Erica. Come on. Come on up close. Amen. Ushers, I want you to encourage them. Here's where the seats are up front now. Amen. Spread out. Amen. Bless you. God bless you. Is there another microphone? Rep. Blaylock. We're going to do a combo. Come on up, Rep. Blaylock. We want you to bless the offering, but then 
also pray a congregational prayer as well. Amen. You can come up here. I'm going to just swap the mics. Good morning, everybody. Good to be together again on this Sunday, Easter Sunday. The day that proclaimed that the Lord has risen. This Easter Sunday. I'm praying for a better year. And I'm praying for those that suffered last year getting over with it. And uh, those that are still suffering this year right now. And uh, anybody got any kind of illness or something wrong uh, in your body going on Amen. that the doctor can don't seem to know he can fix it for you. And I want you to know that God loves you. I love you. Our pastor loves you. Thank God for this privilege. Uh, this great opportunity. Let us bow here. Heavenly Father, God, look over your people's red man. Father, I ask that you would examine each and every one like a doctor would on an x-ray machine and find any problem that is wrong. Father, asking that your mercy that endure forever will fix it right now. Jesus, in your mighty name, we proclaim the day of celebrating the day you rose. And Father, you've done something good then and you're doing something good right now. And Father, we claim, Lord, through the stripes, Lord Jesus, that we proclaim the healing from the beating and the stripes that were laid upon me, Lord, and your body, Lord, taking all our sins, taking all our of the stripes, Lord, the, that things from us that we could not have done, Lord. But God, we thank you today because God, we know uh, that we serve a I am God, uh, a right now God. Father, whatever's in the home, uh, in the hospital, Lord, uh, maybe the, the, the material things, Lord, they, uh, may be a problem. Uh, house or home or cars or the clothes or food on the table. God, today, Lord, we ask for peace and we ask for the healing that we can claim it today. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Anybody Amen. believe that God can touch your body? That yeah. you believe God that, uh, uh, already had healed you? He said you were healed. Uh-huh. Were healed. Not were, but is healed. Claim your victory in Jesus' mighty name. Raise your hand and give God a praise. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless, bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless you. I feel the presence of the Lord up here. Amen. Oh, Amen. song said, woke up this morning with my mind. Come on, help me. Say. Stay.
That's my man right there. Amen. He's full of the spirit. Amen. I'm glad to see Reverend Foy. Amen. Here on today. Bless you, the sister Foy, the whole family. Amen. Much of the family. Amen. I enjoyed hearing what Reverend Foy has preached for us here at the Right Way Church all the way from California. This is his Dallas church home. Am I right about it? But we enjoyed him here when he preached at Right Way. And then I was elated to watch him preach and hear him preach virtually while in California at his home church there. Amen. And God used him in a mighty way. I thank God for all of our associates that have preached throughout this pandemic as well. Amen. Amen. So to God be the glory. Amen. Y'all had it sounding like church out here. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Amen. Well, we want to we want to partake of the Lord's Supper. It's the first Sunday. Isn't that beautiful in the month of April? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Y'all ready for the Lord's Supper? Amen. Y'all act like y'all want another old school congregational. Go ahead. Let the Lord use it. Old song says, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. right there. Tell him what you want. Oh, 
that would like take you see God bless you today what a time what a time of God. Don't forget all the staff. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Dale. Yeah, why do he pass that out? Brother Tim. Song says, I love you, Jesus. How many love him? I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Sound like I got some folk that love the Lord. Pick it up. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Y'all know what I just saw. When I sing that in the confines of the church sanctuary, I can't look up in the sky like I am right now. Do y'all see those clouds up there? He's up there. So when I sing it, I feel it even more out here, y'all. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Let me say, I love you, Jesus. Y'all can say, I worship and adore you. Just want to pray. Love him more than my house, than my cars, than my clothes. Love him more than my wife, than my mother, than my father, than my sisters and brothers. I love him more than anything. Do I have any witnesses here? Because all them folk I named, I wouldn't have them if it had not been for the Lord. Do I have some witnesses here? Hey, hey. big 
mine. Anybody else that loved the Lord above even Lord, I love you more than anything. Can we sing that one last time, real loud, everybody? Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, yes. God bless you. We're ready now to partake in one of the most sacred ordinances of the Lord's church. The Lord's Supper, the communion, the Holy Eucharist. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 teaches us what to do before partaking of the sacred Lord's Supper. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, it says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Listen, but we must examine ourselves. And in so doing, we are to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink, eat and drink judgment to themselves if we do not judge the body rightly. And so at this time, we ask that everyone would bow your heads, close your eyes, pray to the Lord silently for forgiveness of any and all sins, securing that you're in right relationship with the Lord before partaking of the Lord's Supper. Let us pray silently. Lord, we come to this table as your guests, resting in the worthiness of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who died on the cross for all of our sins. Lord, we are reminded of how you hung, bled, and died on the cross on Calvary Mountain. Yet on the third day morning, you rose from the dead, giving us a right to eternal life. Lord, we say thank you, realizing that the bread and the cup commemorate your body and the blood. Be with us now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we ask it all. Amen. Would you take the bread and hold it in your hand at this time? As you hold the bread, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. New American Standard Translation says these words, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me when you eat the bread. Now as you carefully hold the cup, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, says these words, In the same way he took the cup, also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me will you drink it 
closes with these words in verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let the people of God say, Amen. I know it was the blood. Brethren are coming, sister, coming to take the cups. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, church, he died upon the cross. How many thank you for dying? I know it was the blood for me. Did you know they pierced him in the side? They pierced him in the side. Why did they do it? him in the side for me oh, one day when I was lost he died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me yeah yeah I like that I'm grateful for the blood. Anybody else grateful for the blood? Anybody know the blood would never lose its power? If you didn't have these mouth covers on, I tell you to tell your neighbor, there's power in the blood. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I'd have you tell your neighbor, Wonder-working power. Oh, power. Y'all gonna make me. Yeah. Anybody ever experience that healing power? My God, say, woo! Oh, yeah! yeah. Boy, they don't make it no better, do they? My, my, my. We got to move on. Y'all gonna get my cup? Amen. Somebody, you gave it to me, baby. Come get it if you don't mind. Amen. Y'all know we got to look heaven on the way. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Praise God. I'm truly grateful. Amen. Y'all ready for the word of God on today? Y'all ready? Amen. Go ahead and preach. My God. It get hard sometimes, Reverend Mamie. You know. <laughs> all right. It's all right. God is good. Sister Shannon, I got new school and old school in me. 
Reverend Paul, I'm going to preach. But the old school in me just want to do a little bit of shine. Oh, 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 me. How many want the Lord to shine? Shine. Oh. Remember that. Let, let the light from the lighthouse shine. the light of the world from the lighthouse shine oh, 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 me. let us pray father we come now standing in need of your word on today on this blessed Resurrection Easter Sunday. Lord, we thank and praise you right now. Give us your word as you see fit on today. Prepare the hearts and minds of your people to hear what you have to say. We would be your humble servant. Give me power, Lord, from on high. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Cover me with your blood. We'll give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Found in John chapter 2. Amen. John chapter 2. Whatever form of Bible you have, that's cool. Amen. John chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 13 through 22. We'll do this real quick. Try to make it about 15 minutes. 20 tops. Amen. We're going to be gone by 1230 if the Lord allows. Amen. John chapter 2, beginning at verse number 13. We'll read through verse number 22. I'll do the reading as you follow along. The New American Standard 
translation says these words, the Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went out to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. And he, that's a capital H, that means it's Jesus, made a scourge of cords, that's a whip, and drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Verse 16, and to those who were selling the doves, he said, take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. All right, all right. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Verse 18, the Jews then said to him, what sign do you show us as your authority for doing these things? Verse 19, for the sake of our subject, says, Jesus answered them, listen y'all, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Verse 20, the Jews then said, it took 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? Verse 21, but Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. Are y'all hearing me? Verse 22 closes with these words. So when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. I want to speak briefly from this subject today. I told you so. I, I told you so. Are y'all going to pray with me for just a few minutes on this blessed Sunday morning? I told you so. If we would be honest on this Easter Sunday, many of us can agree that oftentimes the last thing you want to hear somebody say to you after something didn't go the way you wanted it to go, after you made a decision that you now realize you shouldn't have made, the last thing that we oftentimes want to hear is somebody to tell us, I told you. So, do I have any witnesses here? Come on, y'all be honest with me today. I believe that all of us have done some things in our lives. We've made some decisions in our lives. And if you're anything like me, you've even gone and asked people's opinions whom you love and respect whether or not you should do what you already have a made up mind to well, do or am I talking well. to anybody is it anybody in my crowd today right. uh, I'm talking about it, 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 that's been there like I've been there that, that you go and ask their advice and their opinion but you already have a made up mind you've already decided and really if we would be honest we really are asking them simply to just agree and confirm am I right about it yeah. What we want to do anyway, anyhow. Are y'all hearing me today? And so when that thing that we have decided takes place and it is not successful as we wanted it to be, then it really bothers us to have to hear someone remind us that they told us so. Are right. oh, y'all with me today? I, I see some children in the crowd. Amen. Oftentimes, we don't want to, and even us adults, we've been children. Am I right about it? David says, I once was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So we've all 
been there, amen, and if we haven't been there, we're on our way. Or y'all going to pray with me today. And oftentimes, the last thing we want to hear our pain, in fact, we won't tell them what really happened. We, we will try to avoid them. Am I right about it today? Because we don't want to hear the truth. And the truth of the matter is that somebody, God may have spoke to somebody to try to help us and heed us the warning not to go or do what we want to do. We went ahead, did it anyway, and so we experienced an I told you so in our lives. Are right. oh, y'all praying with me today? Well, y'all don't want to talk to me, but I'm going to go on and go down your seat in your row here. Right. Am I right about it? You, you've you been with somebody that it did not turn out the way you were hoped that it turned out, and somebody along the line told you so. Have I got a witness here? You, you took on a new business venture, and it turned out not to be legitimate, and before you took that made that investment, you sought the advice of somebody that God sent a word through them to you, and you went on and did it anyway, and you experienced, and I told you so in your life. Are y'all going to pray with me today? Well, the text is tailored to help us on today, to try to do our best not uh, or, or try to do our best to avoid that I told you so experience in our lives. Oh, y'all gonna pray with me today as I talk just for a few more minutes. And so the Bible says in John chapter 2, it begins, y'all are familiar with this, but I want to walk you up to it. It was the first miracle, am I right, Reverend Foy, in the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Bible. Go back and read that second chapter in your own time. I'm going to give it to you. Amen. In a quick way here. But Jesus is, Jesus and his disciples had been invited to a wedding in Cana. His mother had called for Jesus to attend this wedding. He brings his disciples when they get there, they find out by way of Jesus' mother that the wedding party has run out of wine. Yes, sir. Are y'all hearing me? Bible teaches us that Jesus, uh, one thing about it, Jesus' mother Mary asked Jesus, he, 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 she really didn't ask him, she said, son, they have no more wine. Jesus really says, woman, what does that have to do with us? Are y'all hearing me today? And so at that time, Jesus' mother directs her attention to the servants, am I right about it, that are at this wedding gathering, and listen to what she says to, to the servants. She says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do y'all hear me? This is an I told you so experience at this wedding in Cana because Jesus proceeds to tell them to take those empty uh, vessels and fill them up to the brim with water. And when they fill those empty vessels up with water, Jesus then tells them, it's still water, y'all. He tells them to take it to the new american standard says that he's told the the servants are told to take the barrels of water to the head server am i right but others say that the barrel other translations of the bible say that the barrels were to be taken to one of the heads of the table amen and when they tasted that wine that Jesus miraculously turns the water into wine. Watch this, y'all. That person that tastes it says that most wedding parties give the good wine to go ahead and get you drunk. I'm talking to somebody that knows something about this today. Have I got any witnesses here? But And then once you're drunk, you just drinking... Uh, and don't really know what it tastes like anymore. And so he says, I am uh, impressed because most folk give you the good stuff first. And then give you the cheap stuff in the end. 
Because you already, can I keep it real with you? You already messed up. You, what do we call it? You bent. You, you swerving. Ain't that what we call it? Uh, Pastor Bush, know a little something. Do I have a witness? You lit. Amen. And, and, and so, but, but he says, but now it looks like this is a message right here for somebody. That you have saved the best for last. And that ought to be a word for somebody out here today that you might feel like that things are not going your way. You Can we be honest today? You tired of seeing other folk get blessed better than you. Oh, uh, y'all gonna be real with me today. You tired of seeing other folk be ahead of you in the blessing line. But listen, that's a word for somebody today to be encouraged that perhaps your time has not come yet because God is saving the best for last. So y'all going to pray with me today. And that's an I told you so experience. Jesus' his mother said, "What? whatever he says, do, do it. And can we live our lives that way today? Moving forward that whatever God tells us to do, even though Sister Ramona, it's not what we want to do. Uh -huh. When he tells us what he wants us to do, right. then we have his will. We're in his will. We have his protection and we have his provision. Hallelujah. Are y'all praying with me today? I'm going to get to the text here. And so we find that now Jesus is headed to Capernaum. Now he has in verse 13, the Bible says that the Passover of the Jews was near. Are y'all hearing me? And I don't know about y'all, but wherever you go, I believe we ought to find the church. Have I got a witness here? Somebody out of the Lord speaking through me today. God has you uh, relocating in life. God has you moving from here to there. or He has moved you from there to here. Thank God you found the church. Amen. And uh, what God has joined together, I declare let nobody put it asunder. Amen. God bless you today. Now, so we find that Jesus, when he shows up for the Passover, he finds himself going to the church, which is referred to as the temple in this text. Are y'all hearing me? All right, all right. When he gets to the temple... Jesus finds folk buying and selling things not in the sanctuary of the church, but in the temple courts. Amen. That would be like the courtyard in the vicinity of the church. In other words, say, y'all know what a courtyard is. A courtyard is smack dab in the middle of a building that goes around it. Amen. And when you're on the inside of the building, you can look out at the courtyard, which is in the center of that establishment. Are y'all with me today? And so Jesus goes in, sees them exchanging money, he sees them selling doves, he sees them selling pigeons and oxen and all of that. But why? Because the people are there for the Passover. And when you go for the Passover, you are to sacrifice burnt offerings. Am I right about it? Go to the temple, sacrifice burnt uh, offerings, and uh, 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 commune and repent to the Lord. Amen. It's an opportunity to have a fresh start. Is it anybody here today that thanks God for a fresh start in life? Have I got a witness here? Am I by myself? Have, has anybody ever been given a fresh start? Uh, how many know that that relationship you may have been in could have killed you? How many know that that accident you were in could have killed you? Are uh, y'all going to pray with me that COVID-19 could have taken any of us out? Have I got a witness here? How many ought to be able to shout today that you had, keyword had, COVID-19? That means it's past it. In other words, you got to shout because God brought you over and out of your situation. So we find... That those guys, I got. can I keep it real today? They were mad. You don't mess with folk money. Do I have any witnesses here? That's why there's interest. And depending on who you get it from, there's a lot of interest on borrowed money. Have I got a witness here? 
In other words, your mom and daddy taught you, folk don't just give you anything. Have I got a witness here? If you borrow, there's an interest rate, and that means because of the time and the uh, inconvenience of them lending their money, they could have done something else with their money, but while you got it, and uh, I'm not going to mess with nobody, but while you're paying it late, have I got a witness here? There's a late charge uh -huh. on top of the interest. Have I got a witness here? And so they said, listen, uh, you late, I bar you borrowed from me, you got my money, you pay slow, and so when you pay back, I need some extra money on top of the original amount that I lent you. Are y'all praying with me today? And so what happens is, the folk, Jesus goes in, and, and I found this very interesting. Ah, uh, the fact of the matter is, let me clear this up, Reverend Poy, that the problem was not, in Reverend Sterrett, the problem was not uh, the fact that they were selling sacrifices to travelers because that was the way it was. People would travel for the Passover, they would buy the animals in order to sacrifice. The problem with the temple selling was the fact that they were gouging the people. My mother told me the other day that she said, son, I believe they are talking about going up on the prices of toilet tissue, paper towels, the essentials that we need in life because of the demand of it throughout the pandemic. Y'all remember that. And so the problem was they were, uh, they were gouging, that means charging way more than they should have been charging. Not that they were not to make a profit, but don't make triple and quadruple profit. Are y'all hearing me today? And so the bottom line is Jesus comes in and realizes, I'm going to say something here, y'all, that the people were focusing on the money instead of focusing on God. Yeah, right. How many of us can be honest today and admit that there has been times in our lives that we were more focused on the money than we were focused on God? Do I have any witnesses here? Y'all seen the video, where the money reside, where the money reside. <laughs> Told y'all, Pastor Bush, keep up with all that. All right. I ain't gonna bother that young fella. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Have y'all seen it? <laughs> Brindley, have you seen that? You got to check that out. The fella get out of it, and it's kind of erotic. He, automobile salesman, and me and Brother Raymond are as well. Honda SUV to tailgate pop up and this dude get out. I said I wasn't going to mess with him, didn't I? All right. He get out and tell them he be giving them all kind of good deals and stuff. <laughs> oh, Lord, we, we live on this. Why you didn't say nothing, sweetheart? <laughs> Okay, okay. Let's see, some of y'all didn't see it. A lot of y'all didn't see it. But the problem was, watch this, they were focused on the money and not focusing on God. Somebody here today can testify. Somebody has come into your own life. And thank God he revealed at some point in that relationship that that person was focused on the money. Help me, Lord Jesus, and wasn't really focused on you. Have I got any witnesses here? And so we find, yes, that Jesus, he goes in. This is also what I find interesting, y'all. Now, it says that Jesus went in, in verse 15, and he made a scourge of cords. A scourge is a whip. Have I got a witness here? And Jesus takes that whip. Jesus, he a bad man. He takes the whip, y'all. That's safe social distance, Lady Natasha, because he didn't touch it with his hands. Everything he knocked over with that whip, like, like, 
How many of y'all, Training Day is one of those movies, Denzel so cool in that movie, uh, that I can watch it at any time, Training Day and The Gladiator. Do I have some, some folk here that like those two movies? Uh, anytime, I done seen it a, a, a bunch of times, but if I catch it, I'm gonna finish it. Sister Shannon, because I like the movie. But in that Training Day, do y'all remember when Denzel, the, the little young cop that he was uh, training, ran up on Denzel. Denzel was crooked. He was in the uh, apartment. The, the young cop comes in. Denzel pulled it, that gun and he said, I'm, a, I'm surgical with this thing. Jesus was surgical, y'all, with that whip. Are y'all hearing me? And so he knocks all of that stuff over, turns the tables over. He blows their businesses in the temple. Have I got a witness here? And so, I don't have much time, y'all. I got to get out of here. They said that those that were there, they wanted to know what kind of authority does Jesus have? What Yes, what is, uh, let me get to the exact words. In verse 18 of John, the second chapter, they asked Jesus, the Jews said in verse 18, they said to Jesus, what sign do you show us as your authority to do these things? I got to hurry up and get out of here. It's about to get good to me. I see you, Brenton. So good to see you. Amen. And Jesus tells them, my sign is essentially the cross. Are y'all hearing me today? For he says, if you tear, destroy this temple in three days, that's what resurrection and Easter is all about, y'all. Easter is an I told you so answer from the Lord. Do y'all hear me today? Because he says, if you tear this temple, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll build it back up. Yes, Lord. And so the Bible reveals to us that our thoughts and ways are not the Lord's. Have I got a witness here? That's in John as well. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. He says in John chapter 4, verse 48, he says, unless you folk see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Have I got a witness here? And so watch this. They said, but we built the temple. It took 46 years. Are y'all hearing me? That's why it's important for us to understand that our thoughts, our ways are not the same as the Lord's. He is, Jesus is talking about his temple being his body. Bible says, did you know, not know that your body is the temple of God? Am I in the word today? But the folks' mind is on money. Have I got a witness here? They are talking about you're going to tear down this beautiful temple. That took us 46 years. Jesus is on another level. Yes, sir. Bible says that as high as the heavens are from the earth. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do I have any witnesses here? So is his thoughts and his ways that much higher than ours. Yes, yes. And so the cross is indicative of Jesus Telling a dying world simply that I told you so. Are y'all going to pray with me today? Right. I got to get out of here, y'all. But I wonder, is it anybody out there today that the Lord uh, has told you some stuff in your life and he wants you to be encouraged Today, uh, that he will um, uh, do just what he said. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, I 
I didn't mean to hoot today, but can I just do a little bit? Will y'all help me close this I told you so message on this resurrection Sunday afternoon? Oh, Lord, I wonder, is it anybody here that the Lord has told you? Make a way out of no way. Is it anybody here that the Lord had told you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Has he told you that in all? So take your seat. And I told you so. God, for the Bible says that they hung him high. They stretched him wide. They riveted his hands and his feet to that old rugged cross. That was the sign of his power and authority. That Jesus, they did not take his life. He gave his life. For the Bible says that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, that means on the cross, am I right? That I'll draw all men, and that includes women, unto me. On the third day, he said, if you destroy the temple, on the third day, I'll raise it up again. Listen. You don't raise up churches. You build churches. Amen. Jesus was talking about his physical body. And so I want to challenge us today to let's be less physical and more spiritual. Are y'all praying with me today? Amen. The doors. My God, I still feel like I'm in church, y'all. This is your invitation to come to Christ on today. Why don't you come wherever you are? If you want to give your life to Christ, you want to come and unite with this church, the right way church, loving church, I'd love to be honored to be your pastor. I'll pray for you. I'll be there for you. I'll continue to teach and preach. I'll love on you. Believe in you, never give up yes. on you. How many know that Pastor Bush won't ever give up on the people of God? The doors of the house of the Lord are open, and it ain't no doors today. Just come. Yeah. All right, Tim, we can do that. 
Why don't you come today and unite? Yeah, why don't you come? Why don't you come, Brother Chris? Be encouraged. No matter what's going on. God bless you. Come on, give God some praise. Brother Chris. Christopher Jarvis. says angels in heaven rejoice when one comes to Christ. Chris, Brother Christopher Jarvis is the husband of Sister Charlotte Beckwith. Come on, Sister Charlotte. She's Sister Charlotte Jarvis now. Amen. God bless me to perform the wedding. They're a beautiful couple. Amen. To God be the glory. Isn't this awesome, y'all? So I'm extending the right hand of fellowship. Brother Christopher was already a deacon at his previous church. He's coming to unite with the Right Way Church as husband and wife. And that's the way it ought to be. Amen. So to God be the glory. He's saved. He's been baptized. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. I believe there's somebody else here. And see, because somebody... You didn't want to be the only one to come down here. This is your opportunity. You're not the only one now. You got others. Why don't you come? Be encouraged. No matter what's going on, he'll make it all right. But you got to stand strong. Y'all stay right there. Be encouraged. You come no matter what's going on, you'll make it all right. All right. But you gotta stand strong. Let this verse minister to you. Listen. I know right now it's impossible to see. How many believe this? God is going to work it out if you just believe. Remember this one thing while you're going through. I'm a living witness. If God delivered Daniel, Whether it's relationship, financial, gotta stay strong. Be encouraged. Wave your hand if you're gonna be encouraged. No matter what's going on, you make it all right. Won't he do it, y'all? But you gotta stand strong. Let me sing that second verse. It says. Just a test of your faith. So stand strong and dry your weeping eyes. Joy cometh in the morning. Everything gonna be alright. God bless y'all. Love y'all. You can take your seat. I've got most of the information, but I'll get it completed. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you gotta stand strong. Be encouraged. Any 
anybody encouraged today? Don't fool me now. Are you really encouraged? you today remember Jesus said I told you so tell your neighbor neighbor whatever the Lord says he'll do what he says God is not a man that can tell a lie if he says it Old church, you said God said it. Yeah. I believe it, and that settles it. Are y'all hearing me today? <laughs> yeah. God bless you. We thank y'all for coming on this Easter Sunday morning. We'll be in touch with you. See if we can pull this off again. This has been beautiful, hasn't it? To God be the glory. Come on, give God some praise in this house. Amen, amen. Did we miss anyone on giving? I don't want to. Amen, brother and sister Erica. Anyone else? Sister Lisa, good to see you. Thank you for giving. Amen. Thank you all so much. Like and share, comment. We've been live when God blesses us. We thank God for blessing us. Y'all can see that right way has been uh, enhanced on the outside. And so God has blessed us to go on the inside now and remodel the inside. So we're still in the action of course of doing that. And so we need you to continue to be a blessing to this ministry. But we're excited about it. And whenever we go back in, the goal is uh, that the remodel would be done by the end of May. But we will continue to be live, amen, even when we go back in, amen. We thank God for those that are viewing and listening in other states, amen. We love you and we thank God for you. Again, we thank God for all of the staff we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for Brother Jarvis joining on today. And Sister Charlotte Jarvis as well. We love you and we thank God for you. And at this time, if you feel up to it, Reverend Foy, you feel up to praying the benediction. God bless you. Let me get something to wipe down or a fresh mic that's been wiped. Here's some whites right over here. God bless you. We thank God for you all joining in with us. The Right Way Church. Church where God's way is the only way and where bread of heaven is always being served. We're going to close with a prayer from Reverend Foy. He's going to come up. Amen. And pray the benediction because I want you to be on this live. And after that, it will be the conclusion of this blessed day's service. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Yes. I want to thank the pastor for such a powerful sermon. I told you so. Bless my heart, had me in tears. Tears of joy, however. So I'm just thankful today. Let's close.
gracious and eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the power of the resurrection. We thank you for the power of preaching. We thank you for your words today from on high. You told us a whole lot of things told us most importantly that she will never leave us nor forsake us and even on this day we feel your presence we feel your power thank you for this preacher and for this great pastor may you bless him and his family his wife and for little Kevin who's on the way we thank you for the brother who joined Brother Jarvis today and for Sister Charlotte, we, we, we pray blessings upon them. We pray blessings upon this church. Bless everyone on the sound of my weak voice. Give them strength and courage for the journey ahead. We make them mindful of your promise that you will never leave them nor forsake them. So on this Resurrection Sunday, as we go to our various places, we do not go alone, but we go in your presence. So we close praying this prayer in the name of the one to whom every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.